Hello everyone, um, thank you very much for inviting me to moderate this panel. Um, we'll be happy to talk about the real case, uh, real use cases of blockchain and crypto. I think it's a very important subject. Um, and very happy to have uh, two panelists with me to discuss about their own view of what real world adoption looks like. Amazing. So Max, <laughs> hey. um, you're a blockchain ambassador for NIMIC. Yeah. Um, can you please explain uh, what NIMIC is uh, and basically what you are doing there and how it relates to real world blockchain? Of course, yeah. So thank you very much. My name is Max. I'm the official ambassador of the NIMIC project. Um, uh, NIMIC itself is a censorship resistant open source layer one payment protocol. So basically what we do is we run our own blockchain with our own payment coin, NIM, and our vision and our goal is to position NIM as among the top currencies, cryptocurrencies for everyday payments used by just normal people. So that is a very ambitious goal. We're aware, aware of that and we're not the only ones um, working on, on such an initiative. So um, of course you need a good game plan in order to get this going. <laughs> we hope we have one. Um, so, of course, one element is to offer um, like a full array of um, uh, software um, uh, of software applications that enable not only like, for example, we have our own uh, Your Keys, Your Coins web wallet. We developed um, the most decentral um, uh, fiat crypto on an off ramp. And um, we also offer uh, a range of free um, uh, payment solutions, basically for merchants and small businesses. But um, we're fully aware that we can't do this alone. So um, when it comes to partnerships, we are always looking for partners who join us in our quest to bring um, real crypto payments to, yeah, basically to a broader audience. Um, one of these uh, partners that we're working with is an Austrian fintech. They're called Salamantex. And what they do is they develop software that enables traditional payment infrastructures such as these like this is an Ingenico terminal, you might use them from your uh, supermarket around the corner. They enable those machines to process native crypto payments. So that is pretty cool. They're active and up and running in Austria already and hopefully will start in Germany very soon. And um, so basically I called them and asked, guys, what if we could find a city partner that would be willing to roll out crypto payments within an existing retail ecosystem. They said, wow, really cool, all right? They were all for it, of course. Also brought their um, acquiring partner, Concades, uh, with them, who's actually handing out those crypto, uh, those, yeah, crypto um, accepting payment terminals to their um, 100,000 clients in, in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. And uh, well, now that those two were on board, uh, the only challenge that remained was to basically find a city partner. And uh, I happen to grow up in a beautiful city called Mannheim. It's in the southwest of Germany. It's a vibrant university city with around 300,000 inhabitants. And the city itself, in its DNA, has always been embracing innovation, always wanted to be at the forefront where the magic happens and be part of the latest developments. So once upon a time, um, I had a startup within their existing startup infrastructure that consists of eight dedicated startup centers. And um, from my time back then, I still knew uh, the key players um, in this ecosystem. And I just basically gave them a call and told them, listen, guys, like we have this crypto payment infrastructure. Would you eventually be interested in an experiment to roll out crypto payments within the existing Mannheim retail ecosystem? And I was quite surprised that they were interested and they brought more people to the table, um, uh, like representatives of the Department of Economical Development, um, uh, retail um, representatives, city management. And so we, we, yeah, we engaged in this discussion and they really showed interest. Um, what they were asking about is not only to limit this initiative to um, retail payments, but also include the local industry. And of course, NIMIC, we are all about payments. So this is something we can't do. And that is where this whole initiative started to kick off. And then uh, one of our long-term supporters from our community basically works for a big uh, technology consulting company called Exeta. Um, they luckily have an office in Mannheim and um, um, a very impressive track record when it comes to blockchain and DLT projects for the industry. 
So um, they showed interest or they actually became our partner when it for the whole industry topic and consulting and business use cases. Then um, we engaged with another partner who's also a member of uh, Blockchain for Europe, which is Blockpit. Um, Blockpit joins Nimic um, in, in our education effort because this is not only about creating the offer for merchants and for companies, but also any offer also needs demand. So we also have to work with the citizens, educate about blockchain, educate about crypto, and also like in a holistic approach with all that, also the tax aspect. And um, so we, we developed this initiative and it rapidly grew and we are uh, constantly on ramping new partners um, and we're looking for new point of sale system providers, um, uh, payment service providers, crypto ATM providers, and whatever applications that serve in such a real world smart city scenario. So for us at the moment, the next step is that we will engage in a, in a round table. The city of Mannheim um, is going to invite representatives from the local trade organizations, um, uh, the retail association. There is um, a joint city advertising um, initiative and we'll bring um, all of those people together on a round table and see if there and how we could leverage the potential of bringing crypto payments to the retail location, crypto blockchain use cases to the local industry and develop this into um, a strong narrative um, that basically uh, is used as a unique selling proposition, not only for the retail, but also for the local economy. And yeah, with like a long term vision of um, uh, of developing this ecosystem together as one of the, the re first real world smart city use cases for blockchain and crypto. Thank you. Um, very interesting use case and very practical onboarding of a whole city <laughs> to the world a of big uh, challenge. crypto. That's <laughs> a big challenge, I guess. Uh, we probably talk about the challenge a bit later. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you think, Max? Uh, would you uh, agree that education is like a big blocker something that that makes it very difficult for you to um, basically exp expand your use case and, and, and grow your company uh, yeah definitely it's not a big blocker it's an uh, it's a gigantic opportunity i'd like to say because um, education needs to be at the center of everything we do we realized like the um, we've been engaging with the city uh, since uh, february and that was basically before uh, the Terra Luna crash happened, that was before the markets went down 80%. So um, especially when that happened, you know, like a, a partner and all like all these news surface to the top, as soon as you can see it at in, in your local newspaper, you know, um, uh, the, the narratives are, are uh, horrific, you know, people lose everything and it's blockchain and Bitcoin again and everything's a fraud. Um, so that, of course, becomes a problem if you are working with institutions that are not yet onboarded into that concept of the crypto economy. So, of course, um, for example, um, um, our partners that we were talking to from the city side, they became more cautious because they, they didn't know what is basically going on. And um, that was a, a great opportunity and a great learning for us to actually really um, help guide, help educate, explain what's happening here. Like one of the speakers yesterday said, you know, crypto is not good and it's not bad. It's just money. And um, actually it depends on how you interact with it and what humans do. And the, the same or similar things that is that are happening with crypto are have always been happening in, in centralized and traditional finance. They're just more interesting now they happen in the crypto uh, sphere because the media media likes that even more kind of. So um, I'm, I'm kind of happy to be honest that um, that it happened the way it happened because that way we understood a lot better how to tackle this challenge how to um, create a dialogue between the city and the project and the partners in order to really create long-term and lasting value and develop a safe and sound narrative. Because I completely understand that someone uh, such as a startup ecosystem or even a city itself, um, they want to be sure, they want to have certainty that, that if they engage in this crypto economy and do the step that this is actually having uh, genuinely good intentions and, and creates positive value and they don't want to step into any uh, anything that might cause problems. So education um, is, is the most important thing that we can do and that is also besides initiating and leading this effort, um, uh, this is our main 
um, our main challenge and, and task is to help educate not only the citizens and normal people, but also city governments, startup ecosystems. That is our mission here. Thank you very much. Um, I think our panelists get a bit earlier to make room for the guest star of the, of the, of the afternoon. So thank you very much both for being here. Thank you very much. And, uh, looking forward to talk a bit more about uh, all the real world initiatives around blockchain in Europe. Uh, feel free to uh, reach to us and, and ask questions after the panel. Thank you all. Thanks. <laughs>